Hey guys, it's Giovanni. In this lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to successfully start conversations with women and charismatic people that you want to meet. The same skills you will learn in this video will also help you connect with high value guys, allies, business partners. It's going to help you in all areas of your life. This is the third lesson I'm teaching you. This is the beginning of the conversation. You'll recall in lesson one, I talked about style attraction and how this can save you 90% of the work as you go through this cycle. In the second lesson, we talked about nonverbal communications and dating and how this is even more powerful than what you say. And in this lesson, I'm going to bring it all together from style to nonverbals to what you actually say. By the end of this video, you will learn exactly how to approach the girl you want to talk to, what to say, and how to give off congruent, honest signals so she instinctively believes that you're a guy who can add value to her within a dating context. Now, the term that we're using now is opening. It's an interesting phrase that some of the coaches came up with back in the day. Basically, what that means is your ability to go up to someone that you don't know, a total stranger, and be able to make a real connection. You will be surprised at how few people know how to do this properly. I would say 90% of the population don't quite know how to do this. And the remaining 10%, they're either working in hospitality or industries that require them to go up to people, salespeople, cold calls, be able to make that connection, or there's someone who studied this. For example, dating coaches. Now, your ability to go up to someone you don't know and strike up a conversation. Let's just be honest about this, right? It's not a normal thing that most people do. So most people are either fail doing it or they're too afraid or they're living in a social construct where that's not possible. And because most people think it's not possible, your ability to do this will give you such a huge competitive advantage in every area of your life. Two of the great loves of my life came from my ability or maybe my courage just to go up to that girl that just walked by. Just I wanted to meet her and I just went and I had the basic skill sets and I talked to her and she became one of the great loves of my life. This happened again with another girl. My two business partners I met because I ran into them in some hallway and they became my mentors and I made millions of dollars because I was able to make that connection. So yes, it is at a social convention, out of the normal social rules to approach someone and talk to them. But guess what? Most people are living in the social narrative, social context that you're not supposed to do that. And that's why they lead normal lives. Now, when you approach someone, there's different situations that come up. The most common situation is a single guy and a single girl. Now to find an attractive single girl at a bar or at a social event by herself is quite rare. It does happen. But most of the time, if the girl's really attractive, she's most likely gonna go with a friend, be surrounded by a group of friends that she already knows. Because beauty can be a commodity that a lot of guys want. And she has to figure out a way to defend herself from the really weird, creepy guys that inevitably, every situation will hit on her. Another situation is when you're approaching a guy who you wanna impress or you wanna make that connection because he might be in your industry or he might be a mentor or he might just be an ally or a friend that you wanna get to meet at a social event or at a network event. The most common scenario scenario at bars is two girls by themselves and this is one of the easiest groups to approach and start a conversation with and connect with. A lot of times you'll meet a guy and a girl at a bar. Sometimes you'll meet a group of people, guys and girls. This is what we call like a mixed group of people. In general, if you're approaching a girl and a guy, you're really bringing a lot of charm and charisma and your conversation can't be too flirty. You wanna identify their relationship as soon as possible in a smooth way. You want to create comfort and charisma with the guy and you wanna create a subtle type of attraction with the girl, assuming they're not together. If it's two girls, it's pretty simple. You go up, introduce yourself, you create attraction and connection, and you see which one you like better and which one likes you better. If it's a single girl, it depends because sometimes during the day, she's on her own, she's shopping by herself. But generally, I have found that, so there is a propensity for a fight or flight response when you approach. But generally, I find that if you're smooth and you can calibrate properly, the conversation tends to go pretty well and you wanna focus on attraction and comfort. If it's with a group of people, you wanna come across as high value, be able to add to the conversation, bring a lot of charisma. And what I usually do is I neutralize my potential enemies, the guys, basically assure them that I'm safe. Sometimes I may need to bring other girls with me into the group. And then you want to slowly sense which girls are open to flirting with you and then navigate from there. But in group situations, really, I'm just trying to get situational awareness by exhibiting a lot of charisma. You know the term charm offensive? That's my approach with a group. It's, hey, I'm here. I have a lot of value to add. I'm curious about you. 
I'm trying to get a sense of everyone's relationships before I decide on a strategic move. So those are the general social situations that you run into. And then what you want to have are openers. An opener is just a simple way of saying, hey, I'm trying to get your attention. Now, good openers get people's attention without giving away value, right? If your opener is, hey, I, I just thought you were really hot and you know I had to say hello, otherwise I would regret it. It's a common opener that a lot of guys use, but you're giving massive value to the girl, right? You're so beautiful and I, I would regret it if I just didn't come and talk to you, oh my God, right? Immediately, you're positioning yourself as someone who's almost like a fan of her, and it gives you strategically very few options to go from there, except in rare circumstances where she likes you back as well. And if you're a really good looking guy, that could work, but that's like the top 5% of the male population. So it doesn't serve you if you're not there. I'm not there. You're probably not there watching this. So what's the point? Well, the point is we learn proper social skills. Once you have the opener, a lot of guys stay on the opener, right? Like your opener could be, you looked interesting. What do you do? I'm a, I'm a piano player. Oh, cool. Like what type of piano do you play? Like how long did you take piano lessons for when you were a kid? Like where can I buy a nice piano? So guys get stuck on the opener because that's their crutch and they just keep asking subjects about it. And that turns into a very boring, exhausting conversation. The point of the opener is to get, to get her attention. And then after the opener, what happens is there's a transition phase, which is you move off of the opener. A normal conversation with a friend, you're not gonna talk about one subject and just stay there the rest of the time. You jump to different threads, right? And your ability to multi-thread is one of those skill sets that you'll develop as you gain more uh, field experience out there. Okay. The 33 lines below, it's a free resource that gives you some type of guideline, guideposts along this conversation thread that you can download for free. The link is in my description. And if you want to check out the first day formula course, that course goes through the whole process of exactly what to say from the moment you meet her to the moment you go on that first date. A simple marketing model that I'll give you is the AIDA model, A-I-D-A. Attention, interest, desire, action. The opener is getting her attention in a way that's comfortable and congruent and comes in with a lot of value. Then you build her interest in you. You reach the social hook point where she's like, you know, this guy seems interesting. I would like to get to know more. Desire is at the point where you hit that sexual hook point where she's like, this guy is sex worthy. I may not want to sleep with him right now, but I can see myself being open to that possibility. Action is where you have a call to action. So let's take a number your Instagram, let's exchange contact info. She genuinely has a intention of seeing you again, okay? So the data model and marketing can be applied to dating. It can be applied to job interviews as well. It's a very powerful model. Keep in mind your opener is just the attention getting. And it's your job to build a storyline to get interest desire and then to get them to take action, okay? In my private coaching sessions, if you're interested, check the link below. I teach my clients how to go through this model by building a conversational framework that's based on who they are. And that's unique to my coaching style and the authentic attraction cycle. So if that's something you're interested in, I'm currently still coaching and will be for the next three months. It's an opportunity for you to really dial in your dating skills and be able to get this handled once and for all. There are many types of openers. Back in the day, we were all nerds on internet forums and we would go out to the field and we would then post. It was like a perpetuating cycle. So we had like 21 different openers, okay? Right for now, you just need to know two. One is a default opener. A default opener is something you can say to anybody in most situations, 95, 99% of situations that starts a conversation. Feel free to use mine or steal mine. Mine is, hey, I have their attention. I make sure I have their attention. Then I say, you looked interesting and I wanted to meet you. Hey, I'm Giovanni. It's a very versatile opener, right? It doesn't sound like much, but those nine words allow you to engage someone without losing value and without giving them more value than most guys would perceive. And it comes in at equal level. It's a very powerful opener and it gets people's attention. Strategically, that opener gives you a lot of leeways. You can go more flirty, more sexual, you can go more conversational. So no matter where she's at in her attraction cycle, whether she's even attracted to you, you have a lot of possibilities. Even if it's just a new friend, when you go up to girls that you really wanna meet like that, you're gonna make that friend and she's gonna have friends in her social circle that eventually, right, when you meet them, will like you and will represent the type of girl you really want. The second type of opener is a a situational opener. This type of opener requires a little bit more skill, but basically you join a conversation that's already in her head. If I'm online on Tinder, one thing I'll say is there's probably a hundred unread messages in your inbox, but I just wanted to say, 
one thing, right? And that one thing could be an interesting comment about her picture, an interesting observation, or like one thing about your life that, that might be fascinating that just happened. If I meet her in person, one time I was at a nightclub, there was a bottle service girl, she was looking up at the chandelier, and I just immediately went up to her and said, how much do you think that costs? And she's like, I was just thinking the exact same thing. And every other guy that was watching me was like, how did you talk to the hottest bottle service girl she was working? And I said, well, I acknowledge that she was looking at the chandelier. I asked a question based on where her attention was focused on. And then I said, I know you're working, but I'll be around. And I acknowledged the fact that she was working and she appreciated that. And that's why later she came back and we were able to exchange numbers, okay? I acknowledged what she was situationally aware of. I made a comment that joined the conversation in her head. And then I acknowledged, hey, I know you're working right now, but we have a cool connection. I'm gonna be here at this table. So I established value and that's why she came back and we exchanged contact right? You're joining that conversation in her head. It's a little bit harder to do than a default opener, but as you practice, you'll get better and better at it. Now, what I've taught you so far, well, as my mentor said, like, if you just say hi with this information that I just gave you, you win. Because the risk is asymmetrical. What's the worst case that could happen? She's like, no, I'm not interested. Like, see you later. Okay, that's the worst case. What have you lost? Absolutely nothing. In fact, you may have learned something from the reactions that you're getting, seeing a pattern of what you can improve. What's the best case scenario? The best case is she's like, hey, yeah, well, I'm I guess I'm interesting, what about you? You have a conversation, you get a number, you know, maybe you get a few numbers throughout the day. You go on a few dates that week and then you repeat that process, you know, let's say for five to six weeks. On average, my clients, I can tell you that the falling in love ratio, they go on about 30 to 50 dates, depending on where they are in their skill set, before they find a girl that they get into a relationship with or fall in love. And some guys just want to keep dating and that's fine. But let's say your ratio is one to 30 in finding a real relationship. Just your ability to say hi and get into a conversation where it feels real, that can change your life. So your best case scenario is you find the love of your life. And your worst case is absolutely nothing, except the fear that's been implanted in our head for, from evolution because we used to live in tribes of 50 people. But that's just not the case anymore. So override that and just say hi and I promise you, you will win the game. Because Becoming a great coach or becoming a guy who's great with women just takes consistent effort on simple things that are clarified once you know your goal. It doesn't take mad flashy game. You don't need to learn magic. You don't even need to make a lot of money. You just have to do some little things correctly, consistently within the right sequence to get the result that you want.